today we're going to begin with a, a basic restorative yoga practice. You'll need for equipment for this a yoga mat, a chair, a yoga strap, and uh, depending on the chair height, you may decide that you want to put a block or a box underneath the feet. Um, that will help give you a right angle of the knees. But for right now, we're just going to start by setting our intentions. We set our intentions just by closing the eyes. You can usually just let the hands rest on the lap, whatever is a comfortable position. Frequently at this point, I'll introduce a mudra. All we're doing is starting to settle in, get ready for our, our movement and practice. So let's just begin by closing the eyes, finding a comfortable position in your chair, and setting our intentions. here you can continue to keep the eyes closed if you would like. We're just going to begin with some head turns. Gently turning the head to the left and over to the right. Just taking your time. Slowly starting to loosen up that neck. If you'd like to add some breathing techniques to this, you can exhale as you turn the head and then inhale as you come back to center. Now remember if any of the breathing techniques don't feel comfortable or make you feel dizzy, don't worry about them. Then we'll come back to center. Just drop the chin to the chest. Gently shake your head no. And we'll slowly bring the head back up to the top. We can open our eyes, bring the hands together, warm them up. We want to create some heat here. And then from here, we're going to just place the hands directly over the eyes. You can bring them down on the sides of the face or the ears, neck, shoulders, wherever feels good. And if you need a little more heat, go ahead and generate that. And you can do that again. Just starting to wake up the face and the body. And then we'll meet with the hands back in the lap. From here, let's just roll the shoulders. So we're taking them up and back. And if it feels better, you can also just lift and lower. And then let's take the shoulders the other way. And then we'll just let them come to rest. We'll take the left hand, bring it down to the side. Feel like the hand is reaching for the floor. Fingers are stretching down towards the floor. We're getting a gentle pull on this shoulder here. The crown of the head is tall towards the ceiling. Spine is long. If you can come back up off the back of the chair just a little bit, that's good too. Then we're going to bring the arm out to about shoulder height. Feel like it's stretching for the wall. We're going to turn the palm so it comes up towards the ceiling, letting the arm rotate in its socket, letting that shoulder open up. Then from here, we're going to raise the arm up overhead, pulling that shoulder down and away from the ear. A lot of times people take the shoulder up with it, so I want to make sure that that shoulder stays down. Then from here, we're just going to create a little side bend. So keeping the hips level in the chair, just creating a little side bend. 
Now, if it's uncomfortable to hold the arm, don't worry about the arm. You can bring the arm back down to the side, but really it's more about creating this little side stretch. Then we'll come back up to the top, sweep the arm all the way down. We're gonna thread it through underneath the other arm and create a little forward fold here. We call this thread the needle. And let's slowly make our way back up to the top. We'll place that hand back on the lap. Then let's start with the right arm. So reaching that down towards the floor, getting a really nice stretch of that arm. Let's take that arm to shoulder height. Reach for the wall. And turn up palm up towards the ceiling, letting the shoulder open up. And then let's bring that arm up overhead. Again, pull that arm away from the, the ear, so pulling it down away from the ear. And then a little side bend here. Keeping the hips level in the chair. Remember to only take this as far as feels comfortable. So if anything starts to feel like a pinch or a twinge, you've gone just a little too far. We'll come back up to the top, sweep that arm all the way down, bringing it through underneath the other arm to thread the needle. Let's slowly make our way back up to the top. We're going to interlace both hands, turn the palms out, and we're going to press them forward in front of us. As we do this, gently arching the back like a Halloween cat. And then we're going to inhale, bringing the arms up and through towards the ceiling, let the head rise. This is cow. So we exhale to go to cat. And inhale to come to cow. So we'll just go back and forth through this, taking it at your own pace. So inhale as we come to cow. Exhale as you go to cat. Take this at your own pace and your own range of motion. we'll return to neutral. From here, let's take the left arm out, straight out, thumbs up. We're going to do just a gentle spinal twist, so following that thumb around, take it only as far as feels comfortable. We'll bring it back around to the front. Release that hand, let's do the other side. So arm comes out, thumbs up, follow that thumb around. And let's come back around to the front. Release that arm and set it back on the lap. So from here, let's go ahead and take our strap. So with our strap, we're going to start with the left leg. So I'm going to bring it around the sole of the foot. You may want to, a uh, couple things with this, you may either want to leave the two straps free and just hold on to it from there, or you can create a loop with your, your uh, strap, whichever feels more comfortable. We're starting with the leg out straight, just getting a nice pull of the foot, so feeling like those toes are pulling back up towards the shin. Spine is long, crown of the head up towards the ceiling. Then from here, we're just going to do some little heel turns, just gently rotating that heel left and right. Letting the leg rotate in its socket. We do this again when we move to the floor. We do cat-cow also when we move to the floor. 
but you'll find that the range of motion sitting is not quite as much as when we're on the floor. Then we're going to take the strap into our left hand, bringing the, arm, the leg out to the left. Staying tall here. Very easy to jump or, or counterbalance into this, so I want to stay very tall here. Keeping this core engaged, I think belly button pulls into the spine. Remember to take the leg only as far as feels comfortable. Then we're going to bring the leg back across to center and then cross it just gently over that center line. We'll bring it back to center, release the strap, and let's move it to the other foot. So from here, starting again with that foot straight out, foot is flexed, spine is long, crown of the head to the ceiling, shoulders pulled down away from the ears. Let's do our little heel turns again, so gently turning that heel left and right, creating a little rotation in the leg socket. We'll take that strap into the right hand, bringing that leg out to the right. Again, stay tall here. Core is engaged. Shoulders pulled down and away from the ears. Spine is long. Bring this back to center, gently crossing our center line. And then let's bring it back to center. We can release the strap here and just set it aside for a moment. We'll do one more seated position here. So we're going to start with the left knee or left leg. We're going to cross that ankle over the knee. Now, if this is uncomfortable, you can also cross ankle to ankle. So we're just crossing here, sitting tall, crown of the head up toward the ceiling, core is engaged. We'll turn our heart towards the bent knee, and then a little forward fold. So we're keeping the spine long here. Very easy to do this if I round my back, but I want to stay very long here. We'll slowly come up to the top. We're still facing that knee. Then untwist. Then we can release that leg. Bounce the knees just a little bit. Then from here, we'll take the other leg, crossing it over, sitting tall, crown of the head to the ceiling, shoulders pulled down away from the ears, core is engaged. Turn the heart towards the bent knee. And again, a little forward fold here. Slowly come up to the top, we'll untwist, release that leg, bounce the knees up. Let's just roll the shoulders a little bit while we're here. And the other way. One last thing while we're here, we're going to just grab onto the back of the chair or underneath the chair, whichever feels best for you and depending on your chair, what is the easiest place to grip. From here, I've got the hands on the back of the chair. I'm going to lift my sternum up. So I want to get a nice stretch here, crown of the head to the ceiling. And then from here, just a little forward fold. This is a really nice chest opener. A lot of times if people sit at a computer all day or um, sewing or crafting, you, the shoulders start to pull forward and you get that little bit of a hunchback. This is a nice stretch for that to counterbalance that. And if at any point you need to release from this and come in and out of it, you can do that. We're going to release. Shake the arms out. I'm going to kick my block out of the way here. And we're going to work our way to standing. So from here, I want to place my feet firmly into the floor. 
hands onto the thighs. I'm going to do a little forward fold, getting my weight forward into those feet. Then as we come up, we're going to come up into what we call chair position. So it's a little bit of a, of a seated position. And then slowly make our way up to standing. So from our standing position, I'm going to take my chair. We're going to start with it at the high side. Now, depending on the back of your chair, um, this may be easier. Mine's a little high for this. But we're going to start with our feet facing towards that chair. And let's come to the back of our mat for a moment. So we're going to start in standing mountain. So standing mountain is fingers stretching down towards the floor, crown of the head towards the ceiling. Feel that that sternum is lifting up. Feet are about hip width apart. Lift your toes just a little bit. Make sure that they're not gripping the floor. And then from here, we're going to bend our knees just a little bit, placing our hands on the hips. And we're going to do just a little forward flexion. So I'm going to be taking this down, trying to keep the back flat. The tailbone will feel like it's reaching towards the wall behind you. We'll just come in and out of this at our own pace. So here we're just checking in, seeing how the hips are feeling. So as you do this, you may observe that maybe one of the hips or both hips are a little stiff or sore. Maybe there's a little catch. Maybe one side feels better than the other. It's all okay. We're just taking a little note here. And we'll do one more round and then meet back up at the top. We'll come to the back of our chair, placing the hands on the chair. From here, we're going to step back with the left leg. So in this position, now you can keep the chair here if you need it for balance. My back heel is down onto the mat. I'm going to stack my left knee, double checking to make sure that that stays right over the, right over the ankle. So if you see it go too far, or you've got too much of a bend, you've gone too far, you'll put strain on that, on that leg. Um, so again, hold onto the chair anytime you need it. If you have balance issues, Walk the feet out to the sides of the mat a little bit more until you feel stable. So back heel is down, left knee stacked, or right knee is stacked. And we're just going to come in and out of this. Now again, you can hold on to the chair if you'd like. We're just lubricating this joint a little bit. You can even place the hands on the hips or again on the chair, whatever feels best for you. And then they're going to come down and hold. So we're going to stack that knee. Now, making sure the hips are still aligned to the front edge of the mat. The best way to do that is thinking about pulling that hip, that, that forward leg hip back just a little bit so that right hip pull it backwards just a little bit. And then we're going to straighten that leg. We'll place our hands onto the top of the chair if they're not there ready. And we're going to do a little forward fold here. Now if you feel stable here, you can release the chair. You can bring the hands to the hips. Or you may even want to bring the hands behind and raise them up off the back a little bit. That's a nice chest opener. But if you don't feel stable yet, continue to hold onto the chair. We'll slowly come up to the top. We'll stack that knee over the ankle again. And then step it forward. We'll shake it out a little bit. Now we'll step back with the other leg. So again, finding our stance, stacking that knee, double check to make sure that that's where it's going. And we'll go ahead and let this flow again. Taking this at your own pace. So 
And we're going to stack that knee again. And again, continue to hold on the chair if you'd like. You could bring the hands to the hips. Or if you'd like, you may also bring the arms up overhead. This is our full warrior. We're going to straighten that leg, bring the hands back down to the chair. Forward fold. And then finding our arm placement again. So either on the hips, on the chair, or maybe bringing them behind with a little arm lift. Continue to keep the hips aligned to the front edge of the mat. We'll bring the hands back to the chair. Slowly come up to the top. Little bend in that knee and step that leg forward. Let's shake it up. So now that we're done with that warrior one, we're going to turn our chair around and do a sun salutation. So we're facing our chair. We've got the lower edge of the chair facing towards us. Starting in standing mountain. So again, reaching those fingers down towards the floor, crown of the head up towards the ceiling. Core is engaged. Think about pulling the belly button into the spine. Now that doesn't mean hold your breath. It just means pull that, that stomach in. From here, we're going to inhale up. And then exhale, forward fold. Coming all the way down to touch the hands towards the butt mat. Inhale. We'll go to halfway lift, so hands onto the knees. Back is flat. Exhale, forward fold. We'll place the hands onto the chair. If you're advanced to the point that you can go to the mat, you can also go to there. We'll start with stepping the right leg back. Left leg comes back to meet it. This is plank, top of a push-up. So think about one long line from the head all the way to the feet. We'll push the hips back into downward dog. Back into plank. Then step that right leg forward, left leg forward, and reverse swan dive up to the top. And hands down to the heart center. Inhale up to the top. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Placing the hands onto the chair or the mat. Step back with the left leg. Back with the right leg. Plank, top of a push-up. Push the hips back into downward dog. Back into plank. Left leg steps forward. Right leg steps forward. Reverse swan dive up to the top. And hands down through heart center. Inhale up to the top. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Hands onto the chair or the mat. Step the right leg back. Left leg comes back to meet. Top of our push-up, plank. Hips back into downward dog. Back into plank. Step the right leg forward. Left leg forward. Reverse swan dive up to the top, and hands down through heart center. Inhale up to the top. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Hands onto the chair or the mat. Step the left leg back. Right leg comes back to meet. Plank or top of a push-up. 
Hips push back to downward dog. Back to plank. Left leg comes forward. Right leg comes forward. Reverse swan dive up to the top. And hands down to heart center. Inhale up to the top. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Hands onto the chair or the mat. Stepping the right leg back. Left leg comes back. Plank, top of the push-up. Push the hips back into downward dog. Now, if you're okay here, stay here. Otherwise, if you'd like, raise that right leg, keeping the hips parallel to the floor. Good. Bring that leg down if you have it up. Push back into plank. Step the right leg forward. Left leg forward. Reverse swan dive up to the top. And hands down through heart center. Inhale up to the top. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Hands onto the chair or the mat. Step the left leg back. Right leg comes back to meet. Push the hips back into downward dog. Again, if you're okay here, stay here. Or you can raise that left leg. Bring that leg down if you have it up. Push back into plank. Step the left leg forward. Reverse uh, right leg forward. Reverse swan dive up to the top. And hands down through heart center. And let's just release our hands coming back to standing mountain. While we have our chair still here, we'll do a little balance work. So make sure that you've got a chair handy. Eventually when you do the balance work, you won't need the chair, but we'll use the chair here today just so you have it. It doesn't matter exactly where you want to place it, just so it's, it's comfortable for you. We have several different balance moves. One we'll do today, we're going to start with the hand on the chair. We're going to move into tree pose. So during tree pose, we're going to make sure that our feet are about hip width apart. Pull the toes up just a little bit. Make sure that they're not gripping the floor. Starting in standing mountain. And again, if you want the chair, hold onto the chair. We'll start by shifting our weight to the right foot. So gently starting to move over to that right leg, making the left leg just a little bit lighter. Now your tree may just end up being the toes touching on the floor. That's okay. Or I may turn the knee out and keep the toes touched on the floor. That's also okay. As you advance, you may want to bring them up into the, the shin. Eventually you could take them up into the thigh also, but we won't go that far. Now if you're okay here and stable, you may want to release the chair. And then just find your placement as far as where the arms feel best for you. Find a spot in front of you that's not moving. And just breathe into it. Remember, everyone's tree is just a little bit different, so it's okay. We'll slowly release from this, bringing that left foot back down. Shake the legs out a little bit. If you need to move your chair to the other side, go ahead and do that. We'll start again in our standing mountain, lifting the toes, making sure they're not gripping the floor. Starting to shift our weight to that left foot, making the right foot just a little bit lighter. Again, it may come to just the toes. I may turn that knee out or even bring it into the shin. Whoever feels best for you. 
and then find that arm placement again. Wherever feels best for you, or even on the to the chair. And then we're slowly going to work our way out of that. Shake the legs up. And then from here, we can move our chair aside to get ready for our warrior. So for our warrior two, if you have any balance issues, you may want to still keep the chair handy. I'm going to demonstrate it without the chair. We're going to start facing the long edge of our mat. We're going to start in a wide leg. Now, everybody's different, a little different in this on how wide the legs are. That's okay. Feet are pointing towards the long edge of the mat. Then I'm going to take my left foot, or let's start with your right. So your right foot, turn it towards that short edge of the mat. Heels are aligned here. Now we're going to pick up that back heel, turn it outwards just a little bit. Then we're going to stack this front knee, double checking to make sure that it's not going beyond. So if you see it going past the ankle, you've gone too far. Change your stance just a little bit and just stack that knee and then bring it to the top. Hips are still aligned to the long edge of my mat. So we're just coming in and out of this at our own pace, lubricating those joints. And if you'd like, you can add some arms here so you can raise the arms up to the side and then bring them back down as you come up to the top. You may even want to incorporate some breathing technique here. So exhale as you come down, inhale as you come up to the top. We're going to come up to the top, bring both arms straight out in front, thumbs up. Then pull the arms out to the side, stack that front knee, looking out over that left, that thumb. Then let's turn the palms up towards the ceiling, letting the shoulders open up. We'll drop the right hand down onto the right thigh, left hand comes up and up and sweeps up and over for a little side bend. Come back up to the top, bring that arm down onto the thigh, hand onto the hip, open the shoulder up. So it feels as almost like you're trying to flatten yourself to a wall. Continue to breathe. We'll place the hand on the thigh, push ourselves up to standing, turn the feet, Step them in and shake them out. So now we'll do the other side, starting again in wide leg, turning the foot so it's along the short edge, facing the short edge of the mat. Pick up the back heel, turn it out, stack the knee. Double check to make sure that that's where it goes. Again, change your placement here a little bit if you see it going beyond that. And then we'll just start flowing this in and out again. Keeping our hips aligned to the long edge of the mat. And again, if you would like, you can let, add the arms here. Just letting them flow up and down. We'll come up to the top. Both arms straight out in front, thumbs up. Pull the arms open. Look over that front thumb. Stack the knee. And we're just gonna hold. Turn the palms up towards the ceiling. Allow the shoulders to open up. Take the back hand, place it down onto the thigh, 
Other hand opens up, sweeps up overhead for a little side bend. We'll come back up to the top, bring that arm down onto the, the front thigh. Other hand goes onto the hip, open up that shoulder. Now you do have a choice in this position also. You can keep the hand onto the hip, or if you like, you can bring the arm straight up overhead, or you can reach it out over, over you. Whichever feels best for you. Place the hand on the thigh, push yourself up to standing, turn the feet, and let's step. So we're gonna begin our transition down to the floor. If you have any issues with getting down onto the floor with knees or hips or anything, go ahead and go back to the chair sequence that we did in the beginning, um, or you can do many of these exercises still within a chair. Um, I will probably do an extra little video to just show you some options on that. But let's come to the back of our mat. Starting in standing mountain again, fingers stretching down towards the floor, crown of the head towards the ceiling, shoulders pulled down and away from the ears. We'll place the hands onto the hips, little bend in the knees, and let's do our little forward flexion here again. So keeping that back as flat as I can, letting the tailbone tip. This is a great place to just check in with those hips again, see if anything has changed. From here, we're going to come down, walk the hands out onto the mat, and we're going to come to kneeling. Now if you have any issues with knees, you have some options. You can fold your mat and then bring your knees onto that to give you a little extra cushion. You can also place a towel here. Um, my what we want to do is stack our hips directly over our knees. Hands are stacked underneath the shoulders. Fingers are spread wide and pressing down into the, into the earth. Long line from the head all the way to the tailbone. Pull the core in, so feel like that, that tummy is engaged. This is kneeling table. You'll also want to check your elbows to so make sure the pits of the elbows are facing towards each other. Sometimes just a little bend in the elbows will help to do that. Shoulders are broad. From here we're going to just do some little cat cow. We did this earlier sitting, but we're going to arch the back like a Halloween cat. And then drop the chest down towards the floor, letting the head slowly rise. So we exhale as we go to cat. Inhale as we go to cow. Now while you're here, if you have any wrist issues, you may want to play with the placement of the hands. So you could bring them out towards the sides of the mat a little bit more, maybe just a little bit forward. You can also go fists as wrists, so just making two fists. Another great option is if you have a couple blocks, you may want to place the hands on the blocks. These are great options for people. So we're continuing our cat cow. Exhale as we go to cat. Inhale as we come to cow. And let's come to neutral. So again, making sure everything is set. Let's extend the right leg. So the foot is still down onto the floor. Toes are flexed. Core is engaged, just getting a nice stretch along the back of that leg. Then from here, we're gonna take the left leg, turn it off the mat like a kickstand, let the right heel come down onto the floor. We're gonna stack that right hand onto the hip, 
And then if you're okay here, you can also bring the arms straight up towards the ceiling. Let's bring that hand down onto the thigh. Come up to kneeling on that one knee. Left arm extends up overhead. The right arm can slide down the leg. And then just a little side bend here. We'll cartwheel this all the way back down to the mat. Bring the legs back underneath us. Widen out the knees just a little bit, and then let's sit back into child pose. Just letting the head rest on the mat. We'll come back up to kneeling. Resetting everything, making sure our placement is right. Shoulders are broad. Legs are aligned. Let's just do a few more cat cows here. Come to neutral after this next round. And then this time, let's extend that left leg out. Toes are onto the floor, getting a nice stretch to that back of that leg. Then I'm going to take the right foot, turn it off the mat like a kickstand. Left heel comes down. And then I stack. Again here, if you'd like, bring that arm up towards the ceiling. We'll place that left arm down onto the thigh. Come on up to one knee. Bring that arm up over the top and pull the shoulder down away from the ear. Other arm extends down under the leg. A little side bend here. And then we'll cartwheel this all the way back down onto the floor. Bring the legs back underneath. Widen the knees out a little bit. Back to child. So from our child pose, we're going to come back up. We'll straighten out our mat again. We'll walk the knees around to come to sitting onto the mat. Let's extend both legs straight out. Make sure you have your strap nearby. If you have a block, this is great to place between the feet. And we'll start with the strap around both feet. And I'll demo this with the block. You would just remove the block if you didn't have one. Sitting tall here. So really making sure that the spine is long Crown of the head is up towards the ceiling. Feet are flexed. You're using the strap to gently pull the feet towards you. Shoulders are down and away from the ears. This is called seated staff. And we'll slowly release from that. If you have the block, go ahead and remove it. I'm going to take my foot, let's start with the left leg, take it to the corner of your mat. 
Right leg is going to bend and tuck in. Then I'm going to take my strap, place it around that left foot. Again, you can use the strap as two pieces or you can make a loop sometimes, which is sometimes a little more comfortable to hold on to. Pulling that foot towards me, letting my, my heart turn towards that extended leg. And then I'm just going to work my way down. So I may even find that just grabbing the strap and working my way to my foot is a nice way to do it. If you can reach your foot, you can also grab from there. And we'll slowly work our way up out of this. Turn the heart back to center. We'll release the strap. Straighten out the legs. You can bounce them out a little bit if you'd like. And then take the other foot, the uh, right foot, to the corner of the mat. Left leg tucks in. So it may even just be low. That's okay. So tucking it in. Bring the strap around the foot. And again, sitting tall. Shoulders pulled down away from the ears. Spine is long. Crown of the head to the ceiling. Turn that heart towards the extended leg. Walk your way down. Slowly make our way up to the top, release that strap, extend the legs, shake them out. We'll want to make sure I keep our strap nearby. If you have a block, you'll also want to keep that nearby. But we're going to turn ourselves so we're onto the long edge of the mat if you're not there already. And here we're going to come all the way down to the floor. So two ways of doing this, either grab onto the thigh and slowly work your way down. Or you can imagine that you've got two strings that are slowly lowering you all the way to the floor. When you get to the floor, pull the knees into the chest and give them a good... So with knees to chest, you may even want to just do a little back rub just by gently swaying the knees. Just massaging the lower back and sacrum. And then we're going to place the feet onto the floor, pulling the feet in towards the tailbone as much as you can. If you can reach the hands to the feet, that's great. I have short arms, so I can't do that. Core is engaged here. Shoulders should be relaxed onto the mat. And let's turn the palms up towards the ceiling. So we're going to do what's called a flowing bridge pose or a bridge pose. With this, I want you to imagine that you have weights on the top of your thighs, and we're gently going to start lifting that weight towards the ceiling. So as I do that, the hips will naturally rise. Then I can lower it back down onto the floor. So we're just going to take this back and forth at your own pace. Now people like to ask as far as whether they should lift the torso as one or if they should go vertebrae by vertebrae. It's really up to you. Experiment with it. See which one feels better. So while you're doing this, I'll give you some options on this also. If you have a block nearby, you may want to place the block between the knees helps give you a little bit more stability as I do my bridge. Another thing that you could do to build onto this is you could add the arms. So as I bring the hips up, I'm going to bring the arms up overhead and then slowly bring them back down as the, as the hips lower. It's like I'm making a giant rainbow.
So we'll do one more round of this. Remember to take this at your own pace. This time we're going to come up and hold. Now you can either continue to use the block if you if you're chosen that, or you can just come up and hold and just keep the, the pelvis lifted. Now if you're okay here, you can stay here, otherwise you may want to just bring the hands in underneath, which is a nice chest opener. If you have a block, you may also choose to do a supported bridge by placing the block right underneath the tailbone, so you can see that it's just resting. This is a nice stretch for the back and hips. And remember that your block has different heights. So you can adjust where the height is or even where the placement is. So by using the block, we call that supported bridge. Or you can just clasp the hands underneath or just lift and hold. If you have the block, we're going to lift and take that out or release the hands. We're going to come all the way down to the floor and then just pull the knees into the chest. Let's go ahead and place the feet back onto the floor. So from here, I just want to make sure that my shoulders are engaged into the mat. I'm going to take my strap, and let's start with the right leg. So I'm going to lift that leg up towards the ceiling. Now the left leg, I have a choice. I can either keep it bent, or I may even want to extend it down onto the floor, whatever feels more comfortable for you. And you may find that as we go through this, that you may want to change the position. So this is just like what we did in the chair earlier. Just pull in that, those toes back towards the shin. Try and take any tension out of the neck and shoulders. And from here, we're just going to do some little heel turns again, just like we did earlier. And we're going to take that strap into our right hand, taking the leg out to the right. Remember to take this only as far as feels comfortable. If you have a block nearby, you may even want to place the leg onto that block. We'll bring that leg up to the top, gently crossing it over to the center, transferring the strap to the left hand, right arm extends out to the side, left leg, or right leg comes over. If I want to deepen my stretch, turn your head into that right shoulder. Let's slowly bring that back up to the top. You can release that strap or you can just grab the, and change feet in it. Find the placement of the other leg. Extending that up towards the ceiling. Yeah, and getting a nice stretch of this leg. Shoulders are engaged into the mat. And then we'll start our little heel turns. Gently turning the heel left and right. And then let's take that leg out to the left. Again, if you want that support of the block, place that block right underneath that thigh. We'll bring it up to the top. Crossing it over to the right. Taking the strap into the right hand, left arm extends out to the side. If I want to deepen that stretch, turn the head to the left shoulder. We'll 
come back up to the top. Let's just release that foot from the strap. Pull both knees into the chest. Give them a good hug. Maybe a little back rub while you're here if it feels good. So from here, we're going to keep the right knee into the chest. Left leg is going to extend down to the floor. Feet are flex. Pull the shoulders down so that they rest into the floor. Try to take any tension out of the neck and shoulders. On the next inhale, bring the left leg in. Exhale, take the right leg out. Inhale, bring the right leg in. Exhale, take the left leg out. Inhale, bring the left leg in. Exhale, take the right leg out. Inhale, bring the right leg in. Exhale, take the left leg out. Now, if you're okay here, stay here. Otherwise, you can add a little heel lift. So the higher you bring this leg, the less strain that will bring onto the stomach and neck. So find that sweet spot. Inhale, bring the leg in. Exhale, take the right leg out. Start with it at the floor. And then if you'd like to add the heel lift, find that spot. We'll pull both knees into the chest, give them a good hug. Little back row here. And then I'd like you to imagine that you have pencils or markers or crayons or something on your knees. And we're going to draw a pattern on the ceiling. So just whatever pattern you want. You may take the knees together or in opposite directions. They may go in little circles of their own big figure eights, whatever feels right. We're massaging that lower sacrum. Now from here, you can either continue to do that, or if you'd like, we can move into happy baby by grabbing the big toe on each foot. Or you could grab to the shins. This is Funky Cobbler. Whatever feels best for you. And you can continue to massage that lower sacrum. And from here, we're going to work our way down into Shavasana. So Shavasana is our rest pose. So if you need a blanket or anything underneath your head, maybe a bolster underneath the knees, you can also, if you still have your chair nearby, Place the feet up on the chair. Whatever feels comfortable. Something that you can stay in for a few minutes. And just allow your practice to absorb. This is one of the most important poses that we have. It allows everything to settle and absorb. And we'll just be here for a few minutes.
we're going to slowly start coming into more awareness just by wiggling the fingers and the toes. Maybe if it feels good, turning the head side to side. Then we'll pull the knees into the chest one more time. Give them a nice hug. And when you're ready, rolling over to the right side. And you can stay there for a moment if you'd like. And we'll place our hands onto the earth. Gently push ourselves up to sitting. And come into a comfortable seated position on our mats. If you have any issues with hips and this is uncomfortable, you can also go back to your chair. Or you may even want to grab a blanket or bolster to just lift the hips a little bit. We'll just come to a comfortable seated position. Eyes are closed. Hands come to Anjali Mudra, so palms together over the heart. Anjali Mudra is our mudra of yin and yang, left and right coming together. Soft gaze at the fingertips. Take a moment and give yourself thanks. Thanks for taking the time. And acknowledge your practice. And thank you for practicing with me. Namaste. I wanted to give you an, an option for if you decide not to go all the way down to the floor. So when we transition down to the floor, many people in my class will, will go back to their chairs. Um, we've done a ready the cat cow where we've stretched everything out this way. So when we do that, we could go to the chair doing that. Um, the other one that we uh, can do from the chair is when we're doing the knee pulls. So I can pull that knee into the chest from here and do all of my switching back and forth from here. So this is also a great option. And then again, we had the leg extensions that we did earlier with the strap. So those you can always go back to also. Um, the only things that really don't work from the chair uh, some of the some of the extensions you could go back to to pigeon again um, for a few of those so kind of play with those a little bit if you have any questions about them let me know and I can create a new video